Hello viewers. My name is Jane Kariuki. I am a wife and I am a mother of two daughters. Professionally, I am a counseling psychologist. We have been working this journey together with you, our viewer. And uh, you can remember that we have been looking at losses. We looked at the different types of losses. And specifically, we looked at loss of a loved one. We looked at loss of property. We looked at loss of body parts. We looked at losses of jobs, businesses, and others. We then came and looked at how the news are broken. And in our last episode, we looked at factors or things that we consider before breaking bad news. We concentrated mostly on breaking bad news of a death. Today, we are going to look at how is done. And before we get to how is done, I would like to just remind us some of the considerations or some of the factors that we would need to look into so that we just remind ourselves. One very important factor that we looked at is the environment where you are breaking the bad news. We say it needs to be a safe, calm environment. The other thing that we talked about was that the age. We needed to look at the age of the person that we are communicating to. The third one was the information that we are providing. Providing facts to that person. Then we asked ourselves, what about the words that we use? And we said, there are some phrases, statements, and words that people use when they are reporting or communicating that a death has occurred. And some of those, we, were, we can remind ourselves and say, some of them we said, rested, gone away, promoted, departed, and many others that we talked about. And we called those words, if you miss sims. And we said, when we are communicating, when we are reporting, when we are telling people, when we are sharing an issue of death or bad news, we said we'll use clear language. And today is now what we want to see. How do we now deliver this information? How do we tell the person this and that has happened? And this, as I, guess, I said again, it includes the, the, the losses that we talked about, even of a job. The news may even include reports of a sickness. You've gone to hospital and there is breaking of news that you have a particular condition. Probably you have cancer. Probably you have diabetes. Probably you have blood pressure, high blood pressure, or what we call hypertension. Uh, hypertension. And those kind of news, they really affect the person who is being given the news. And those are some of the things that we want to, to look into. How is it now supposed to be delivered? One very important thing that we need to consider, and we mentioned it before, is the environment, the place where you are giving this information. So the, inform the place that you are sharing this information and remember, it is very sad news and very critical news. That place needs to be quiet, safe for the person, and for yourself, the one who is 
delivering this information. The other very important thing that we need to consider when we are doing it, we need to be empathic. We need to put ourselves in the shoes of this person. We can't understand what they are going through even as we are delivering this news. But we can imagine, we can get into their world by being empathic. It is not a matter of jokes that we are talking about this issue and you are laughing, you are smiling, you, that, that environment requires you to be in that situation, the here and now of that situation. Be empathic. The other very critical thing is the way you talk. Be slow and gentle. Slow and gentle. Don't rush to the person with words that just... Can you imagine this happens, for example? This happened. Wow, 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 this happened. Do you know so and so? The person has died. Avoid such kind of things. Because as you remember, we said that delivering of this news can be done by anyone. So, and that is why this program, Health Now Show, is coming in to equip you, to empower you, so that you can be able to deliver this news when they happen, because they usually happen. So we avoid that kind of a language. We become gentle and slow. When we are gentle and slow, we also pause when we are giving that information. We allow the person to get the information in by pausing. This also allows the person we are talking to or we are sharing this information with to ask questions if they have or to also react in the way that they would like to react. And most times it is about questions that they may want to ask or clarifications that they may want to ask. What about when we are delivering this, this news of either a disease, a condition, loss of a loved one, of a job, or any other, to an old person? This old person, or the ones we call the senior citizens, you also need to be sensitive the way you handle them. Be gentle. Be empathic. Be with them in a very safe environment. And take them step by step, even according to their age. They may react. They may just keep quiet. Allow them. If they want to be silent and not ask, allow them to be. Allow them to be. The other thing is, when you are delivering this information, it is helpful when you don't compare another loss with the person that you're sharing with. Their loss is individualized, is personal, is theirs. It is about them. The other thing that is very critical is when you are sharing this information with a child. I want to go back there because this is very important. Sometimes we we are not we don't know what to do with a child and we don't know how to communicate the loss of a loved one either a parent, a friend or a neighbor or any other person that is important in their lives. With children, we use age-appropriate language. Age-appropriate language. 
so that they can get what we are saying. Two, we say it is helpful that we do not tell the child how they need to behave. We do not. We again are honest in what we are telling them. We are truthful. We do not lie to them and tell them daddy has gone on safari because they'll be waiting for daddy to come. So be honest and truthful to them. Allow them to ask questions. They can ask so many questions. Answer only the questions that you have answers for. The ones that you do not have answers for, be honest and tell them that you do not have those answers. And mostly the why question. Why was my dad taken away? How why did God I mean why did my dad die? They can ask those questions. You do not have the answer for a why question. The child also is modeling how you are doing it. The child if you are sad yourself and if you are crying the child will see that these news are sad and they can model that allow them to express their feelings if they cry validate that or tell them it is okay for you to cry with that kind of information allow them to be with you allow them to express themselves the other thing with children is that they may you may give them the information you may share the information and then you find that they have left you and they have gone allow them the freedom allow them the space however assure them if you can that you are there for them and if they have any other question you can be able to help them you can be able to answer them and as i said you only answer the questions that you have answers this will avoid them keeping on going back and saying i was told this and then they are finding out something different with telling and uh, you know the how that of news that have happened we remember it is bad news we remember it is bad news and bad news need to be taken that way because this person the way we deliver the bad news determines how they move to the next steps of grief as we are going to see in our later uh, our future episodes that are coming up so i'll want to conclude this session today by just highlighting one very important thing that when we are sharing bad news we will need to prepare this person emotionally we will tell the person i have something important to share and when you have taken them to a, the environment that we talked about and the person is looking at your non verbals because they are also observing how you 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 are behaving you tell them i have something important or i have something that is not good that helps them to build anticipation into the news that you are going to tell them as much as it is bad news because you finally you will tell them what it is that said is that for everyone they need to be respected they need to have their dignity and that is why we are saying the environment that's why we are saying the language that is why we are talking about the respect 
and that for today brings us to the end of this session but bear in mind that we will be moving ahead now in our coming episode that we want to look at how does somebody respond or behave when they have lost a job a loved one we will be having guests that will be coming and they'll be here with us that they will share their experiences how either this bad news were delivered and how what happened after they were delivered the way they were delivered and this we are doing uh, with you our viewer because we want you to be in a better place in terms of receiving this information when it happens or sharing this information with a loved one with a friend with somebody else when it happens thank you so much for watching keep it health now program on prayer keep tv and get in touch with us on plus 254 114 404 200. Thank you so much. See you next time.